Hello, good evening. Uh, I'm Dr. Anil Goody. I'm one of the consultants in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Center. Uh, today we discuss another topic which is of clinical importance to all of us. And the question comes here is, how do you improve IUI success rates and what is the role of luteal phase support? And this is hotly debated if you see almost all the evidence that has come up to date and, and the general agreement was that if you do stimulated IUI then you don't need luteal phase support because the corpus luteum function is not disturbed, you're not used the antagonist and you're not under long protocol. So all these cases you maintain an intact corpus luteum and you maintain an intact luteal phase and thus it is, there's, and this is a general belief. So there were generally would have been huge debates into looking at should luteal phase support be given and should luteal support be not given. Now, if you have a look at this systematic review that came up and it looked at uh, progesterone luteal phase support after ovulation induction and intrauterine insemination, an updated systematic review and meta-analysis. Now, question number one, is luteal support needed? And what we know is that pulsatile LH secretion stimulates the corpus luteum to produce progesterone. Now, fertility treatments that we give are known to interfere with luteal phase by various mechanisms. And ovulation induction, we know, can lead to premature rise of, of progesterone. And that evidence is quite reasonably better with IVF, where a large number of follicles give rise to premature rise of progesterone. And also, if you increase your E2 levels extremely high, you're altering the, the LH, the luteal phase, by a completely different mechanism. We also know that in IVF, you need luteal phase support, and without luteal phase support, there is extremely good evidence to suggest that pregnancy rates are lower. In intrauterine examination, that debate continues. So what did this systematic review do? It looked at all the meta-analyses of RCTs where exogenous progesterone was used. And it was a comparison between exogenous progesterone during luteal phase after ovulation induction and intrauterine insemination and no progesterone. 31 publications were looked at, 10 studies were reviewed and it looked at clinical pregnancy rates which increased after progesterone. Eleven studies again which looked at 4,000 patients also suggested that clinical pregnancies tend to rise after progesterone. So let's look at and let's look at let's split up this data and let's look at the split up data. If you look at gonadotrophins in IUI and there's now level one evidence to suggest that progesterone support increases after live birth rate in gonadotrophin and IUI cycles. The risk difference was about 9.5% per patient in progesterone supported groups. And that is in fact something which is quite a new thing. And I think a lot of us who believe that we should not give progesterone at all to gonadotrophin stimulated cycles uh, we'll need to have a, a general rethink at this. Now, what happens if you use clomiphene plus gonadotrophins? Does luteal phase support work? And here, the evidence is insufficient. And in three cases, it's three studies, the clinical pregnancy rate was unchanged. The combined clinical pregnancy rates were not very much different in both the groups. And thus, we just don't know if but in a case of adding gonadotrophins in IUI with clomiphene, you need to give luteal phase support. What happens if you give clomiphene? And if you just give clomiphene and do intrauterine insemination? And there, clinical pregnancy rates were again unchanged in the clomiphene group and in the control group. And there's absolutely no evidence that giving luteal phase support in a clomiphene cycle tends to improve results. The question again asked is what happens with letrozole? And again, there's only one study which was done which had, uh, which 
did not look at live birth rate and at present we have insufficient evidence to suggest or evaluate the effect of progesterone in luteal phase when you give letrozole. So well, if you now split up the data, it's, it seems that looking at the analysis of all these meta-analyses that if you give progesterone support in the luteal phase in a gonadotrophin stimulated cycle, you are more likely to get a better pregnancy rate. And that is based again on reasonably good evidence that's coming up. But if you add clomiphene and you add letrozole, that evidence is not there. Also, in natural IUI, that evidence is not there. The evidence of giving luteal phase support there is, at present, is completely insufficient to come to a conclusion. Now, let's have a look and see what happens with clomiphene. And, and th there may be a reason for this. And I, you know, I, sometimes we don't find a reason, but sometimes we have to search for that reason. And what we look at is we look at clomiphene, and clomiphene initiates ovulation induction at the level of the hypothalamus. There's a lack of negative feedback, and that's what clomiphene does. And what then happens is the GnRH pulsatile frequency of increases FSH and LH, and both these hormones start increasing. And that's something which is fascinating with clomiphene. And uh, I'll tell you, you can use clomiphene in many extended versions of your treatment where uh, you are not worried of having an immediate effect on the endometrium. But also there is an, an, a, the benefit with clomiphene that luteal phase may be enha enha enhanced because you've got high levels of LH and you've got persistently high levels of LH that are present and that is something which you'll have to, uh, that differentiates uh, the luteal phase within clomiphene and gonadotrophins. If you look at gonadotrophins, they directly stimulate the ovary. The negative feedback at the level of the hypothalamic and the pituitary is present and it doesn't block that negative feedback mechanism and it seems to disrupt the pulse style nature of the LH and, uh, and FSH in fact and that is more likely to impair the corpus luteum and in fact there are some studies which have shown that women who have had gonadotrophins tend to have a slightly altered luteal phase uh, function and luteal phase progesterone so at present I would say that there is reasonably good level 1 RCT evidence that if you give progesterone in a gonadotrophin induced ovulation induction cycle with IUI then pregnancy rates may be slightly better. But again there is no evidence that the outcomes with progesterone in clomiphene and letrozole cycles. And that is something I, I believe is new and I believe that there is some evidence to uh, 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 you know, have a look at where to use it. And I think we are justified in trying to change our practice here. And I believe I'll probably change my practice also in trying to consider whether we should use uh, a small bit of luteal phase support when you give gonadotrophin. Uh, but as, as soon as you decide to uh, go ahead and uh, use clomiphene or use an antagonist or a down regulation, I think there the evidence is far better and I believe that some of us use the antagonist and use down regulation for IUI to have better timing and to prevent premature LH surge and in those cases I think there is significantly better evidence to suggest that you should lose luteal phase support. So that's the conclusion guys and I think I, I hope that that would help you to change a bit of your practice. I hope you enjoyed the lecture and again, I'm hoping to see you again uh, next week. Thank you very much.